Bienvenidas, bienvenidos. We visited the country of Andorra for the weekend and wanted to share some highlights with you. Beautiful country tucked in the Pyrenees, but first this is Latina Literati. If you enjoy amazing stories, wonderful people from past and present, and great books, then this is the channel for you. Andorra has existed since the 12th century and is said to have been one of the states created by Charlemagne to be buffer states between Islamic Spain and France. At 180 square miles, it joins countries like Vatican City, Monaco, Liechtenstein, and others, San Marino, for example, as some of the smallest countries in Europe. France and Spain have co-ruled Andorra technically France and Catalonia. And you'll recall that in medieval times, when you married someone, usually if the family had power over an estate or a small state like Andorra, it would go back and forth. And Andorra did go back and forth between different families in Catalonia and always part of France. And so France itself has invaded and occupied Andorra several times when it feels that there's a bit of unrest before elections and things. So they seem to carry the big stick. Catalonia, not so much. They've given them pretty much a lot of freedom. But since 1990, they've had a spanking new constitution, which gives them things like an independent judiciary and more democratic structures. So we're going to talk a little bit about Andorra and what a lot of people call the tax advantages of or tax haven of having a business there. And I thought that would be of interest to you. Under its new constitution, the role of France and Catalonia has been limited, but it is still there. And even more importantly, under the pressures of the European community, Andorran government actually had to start taxing the revenue. So before then, maybe it would be considered a tax haven. Now it just is a tax advantaged place to set up a business. And a lot of Spanish streamers have found a way to become Andorran citizens because of that tax structure. And so very briefly, what is the tax structure of Andorra? For your personal income tax, the first 24,000 in the currency of Andorra, which is the euro. In other words, they incorporated the euro into their economy. The first 24,000 euros is taxed at 10%. The next 16,000 is taxed at 5% and so on. They also don't have double taxation. So if you own a company and it makes 10 euros, one euro, 10% goes to Andorra. If that company then issues a dividend of 100 euros, that would be considered double taxation, and so that would not be taxed. When you consider that on either side of Andorra, France and Spain have their taxation rates at about 50%, that's a huge difference. Even the United States, the tax rate is about 30% for personal and about 20, it's in the 21%, maybe it's up to 25 now. For corporate, again, really big difference between the taxation rates when you compare them to the companies next door and even to other countries around the world. So that's why it's considered a tax haven. But Andorra is shopping central. There are thousands of people shopping there every day because of their tax structure. Everything is cheaper from cars to clothing and you see people going in to buy motorcycles and all sorts of things. People go shopping to Andorra. That is absolutely a huge reason why people come into this principality. Because Andorra is tucked in the Pyrenees, snuggled in between France and Spain, 
when, for example, you go to a restaurant, you'll probably see tapas. You'll probably see typical Catalan food and also some of the French food. It's also of interest that the Andorran flag is made up of the colors of the Catalan flag, red and, and yellow, and the colors of the French flag, red and blue. So those are the colors, the reasons why the Andorran flag is the colors that it is. It's also the only flag to have such an obviously religious symbol like the papal crown and two cows. These are symbols of the families and the nobles that at one point were in charge or governed Andorra. They've kept it as a symbol of their origin. Doesn't mean much today, but originally these were symbols of the French and Catalan families that were given Andorra to govern, basically. The official language in Andorra is Catalan, so it's of interest that when you get there, there's almost no difference between leaving Spain and coming to Andorra because everyone is still speaking to you in Catalan. Got through the hike, had a wonderful tapas dinner. The next day, we decided to take the mountain. We went to a tram, and you can take a tram all the way up to the top and see Andorra, as well as parts of Spain and France. And so that's what we did. It was so, so beautiful. Garden on the Andorra uh, funicular tram that is taking us up the mountain. So we're confronting our fears. Yes. We're laughing in the face of danger. <laughs> we are taking the mountain. No fear. We are here. Not because we think we can, but because we know we can. We are here. With no fear. <laughs> we confronted our fears, didn't look down, and went to the top of the mountain. Very, very beautiful. In this incredible panorama, you can see Andorra, and you can see France, and you can see Spain. Amazing. Three countries in one. It's a beautiful, beautiful mountain. Andorra feels like a world apart with the Pyrenees as a backdrop. No matter where you are, you see these majestic mountains before you everywhere, literally everywhere. The Pyrenees are very, very high and they're very imposing in their view as you see them wherever you go in Andorra. So highly recommend a visit if you have the ability to visit Andorra. If you're in Barcelona, it's just a few hours away. We rented a car, and so that allowed us more flexibility to go out into the country to do things. I think that's the way to go. You can take a bus in or a train, but it's not the same. It means that you're going to be pretty much stuck in Andorra la Vie, in the capital. But really recommend visiting Andorra. There are, of course, world-class skiing in the winter and all sorts of summer sports like mountain biking and hiking in the summer. It's really, really well worth a visit. Very beautiful place. Lots of shopping. <laughs> there are also spas and resorts that advertised. We didn't have the time to visit one, but you can definitely feel that this is also a spa spot. So we definitely felt that the hills were alive. And of course we did play the Sound of Music soundtrack as we went on this road trip. <laughs> So a fun weekend discovering this principality of Andorra. Again, recommend a visit. Fun, fun, fun. All sorts of fun. And now for my favorite part of the video, the book recommendations. So the first book I'm going to recommend is called A Report from Practically Nowhere by John Saul. And interesting because he takes the smallest countries in Europe and talks about them, talks about them in history and tells you things about them. And so I thought that was really a good book to read when you're going into these small countries where you may not know a lot of the history and a lot of the details. So recommend it. It's called A Report from Practically Nowhere. And again, always check your library, your local booksellers. We want to support our local booksellers and our libraries. And if perchance that's not available to you, we always include the books in the description box below.
So the next book that I wanted to recommend is Homage to Catalunya by George Orwell. Now, George Orwell, of course, is known mostly for the futuristic book 1984, which has long gone, and some would say many, many of the things in the book have come to pass. But Homage to Catalunya really talks about the role of the Catalans in the uh, civil war of Spain. You remember that if there was ever a right or wrong war, many, many people felt that the Spanish civil war was it. And you had a democratically elected government, and then you had fascist forces that wanted to topple it, and indeed did end up toppling a democratically elected government. Most of the countries in the world refused to participate, and many say that fascism could have been stopped in Spain before it ever rose in Germany and Italy. But in any case, George Orwell does a wonderful job of talking about Catalonia and the role of Catalonia in the fight of fascism. And of course, Andorra was a center of espionage during the time. It was technically neutral, but you had a lot of people hiding, a lot of people trying to survive and to get information to the side that they were supporting. So again, highly recommend George Orwell's Homage to Catalonia. The last book I'm going to recommend doesn't have anything to do with Andorra, but it is very delicious. It's called Dieciséis Notas, 16 Notes. And the author is actually a well-known television personality. He's a well-known commentator. And this is his first book. He decided, oh, I'm going to do a book about, I don't know, greatest composer of the what's called the earliest period of classical music, John Sebastian Bach. And what he discovers is that there was a whole kind of secret life to Bach that nobody knew about. And so fascinating book. I'm only halfway through it, but I'm really enjoying it and really recommend it. And I know you will too. <laughs> Wonderful book about the life of John Sebastian Bach. So thank you so much for this joint journey, for coming to the end of the video, for enjoying this video. We love making these videos for you, doing the research, reading the books, of course, and we hope that you enjoy it as well. Let us know what you think. What are you reading? What did you think about this comment? Let us know. And what would you like us to prepare for you in other videos? Because we've done that in the past and we'll continue to do that when asked by members of our community to look at a specific topic or a specific person, then we do that. And uh, we hope you enjoy that too. So we would love you to subscribe to Latina Literati. We are very, very close to a thousand subscribers. That would be great. And as always, con mucho cariño, mucho amor y mucho salud. Gracias.